Hello once again everybody, Mr. Scary Muffin here, and this is the third part, third and final part, of the Thunder Mountain series of gameplay anyways, and this will probably uh, be the last one I record before I head off to Japan as well, although I might do one more in case uh, I feel lazy when I get back, uh, who knows, vacation tends to do that to you, but we'll see. Anyways. Today I wanted to talk about uh, an interesting topic because recently um, I've been playing on a different server. Oh goodness, gracious. this one is of course is the clip that you're watching is from Duck Soup Gaming. But there is another server that I played on when I first started. It was called uh, Brotherhood of Slaughter, and it's an LA-based uh, server. And I originally, when I started playing TF2, I was playing on uh, BHS. Because one of my friends from my Counter-Strike days, he was a guy on that server. He was a guy. He was a guy that people knew on that server. And he says, that's a good server. And it was an all-talk server with custom maps and everything. And those were the kind of stuff that I liked when I first started out. So uh, we both came from the Counter-Strike kind of place. And it was a custom map and all-talk. So that was the kind of stuff I enjoyed. So I went and I played on Brotherhood of Slaughter and had a really, really good time. And I still have a good time when I go there to these days as well um, but there was a reason why I switched over to Duck Soup Gaming and I really didn't even think about that until recently when I started playing on Brotherhood of Slaughter again and I kind of went you know something feels off about this server something doesn't feel that great and I feel I felt like even though I was still playing TF2 I wasn't enjoying myself playing TF2 as much and there was a couple of reasons for this. The big reason was fast respawns. Brotherhood of Slaughter has fast respawns. And what that means is that uh, after you die, like what happens is that maps, when you die, there is a certain time that you're supposed to respawn. You're, uh, you have to wait like maybe 10, even 14 seconds, God forbid, uh, before, you have, before you can respawn. And the reason why I didn't like this was because... Um, the reason why I didn't like this is because it causes stalemates, right? What happens is that if you have an attacking side, for example, and they've pushed the uh, defending side all the way to the last point, if the defending side keeps respawning over and over again really, really fast, then there's no way, no easy way for the offense to be able to push in and gain any sort of momentum, right? If you imagine a server filled with people who were extremely good at, at the game, or even just three people who were really, really good at the game, right even if you manage to kill one or two of them you don't get that much reprieve because you they were going to respawn right away and th there's no time for you to capitalize on the fact that they went down right normally what happens is if you get a kill you can then push through and get some more kills and you know get a little bit of a snowball effect going on but unfortunately because of this uh, fast respawn, right? There's a never-ending stream of defenders coming back out, and you get uh, crushed, and it, it causes a stalemate issue to occur. If you thought Dust Bowl last was terrible, can you imagine that with fast respawns? It's that kind of thing. It's it's super super hard to deal with. And the reason I bring this up was that when I was playing a Brotherhood Slaughter, I was looking up how to get better at TF2 and I was watching different videos and stuff like that. I, I don't remember what it was, but something out there, I think it was probably Community Fortress. I was reading an article on Community Fortress, I think, and basically it mentioned playing with normal respawns and playing on a vanilla server or playing um, with 24 man kind of thing with, with fewer people basically right because uh, I believe back in the day uh, Brotherhood of Slaughter had like a 36 slot server, a 32 slot server and it was like ginormous there's so many people you really couldn't do anything and these maps basically were made they were balanced around 24 players and with they, they've set a respawn time that is on purpose there's a reason why they have this respawn time it's so that things are fair and so that people have a chance to gain some uh, momentum and push into areas. And when you have fast respawn, it takes away from that. So when I read that Community Fortress article way, way back when, it was like two, three years ago, 
I went out and said, okay, you know what? I'm going to find a 24 normal respawn all talk server. Of course, it has to be all talk because I love all talk. I love being able to talk to people on the other team because if you're only talking to people on your own team, you're only ever going to be discussing strategy. But if you can do all talk, you can have fun. You can talk about random things. You can taunt people, trash talk, all that kind of good stuff, right? So I looked for that and I found Duck Soup Gaming. And I. Even now, even though I've started playing a little bit on Brotherhood Sla Slaughter, I prefer Duck Soup Gaming over everything else just because it has normal response. And it's so important because it makes the maps way more fun, right? Because some pe to some people, having fun is just killing a lot of people and doing well. But for me, I, I like to actually see the ebb and flow of maps. If I lose, I it doesn't even matter so much. I mean, in fact, uh, the previous two Thunder Mountain clips you saw are, were losing ones, otherwise we wouldn't have got to the third stage here, right? But yeah, the maps are balanced in particular ways, and I feel it's important to keep them the way they should be. Um, but yeah, anyways, it does the tale of two servers. <laughs> and I don't think I've actually played on many other servers since. Uh, whenever I roam to other servers, I've always found that the Duck Soup gaming community is a little bit better. Uh, in general, and it might has it might have to do with the fact that they are used to playing uh, with this vanilla setup. The fact that it's 24 players and it has normal respawns. You just learn how to deal with this kind of stuff a little bit better. Oh, group! I should have punched them. <laughs> Anyways, I, I guess that's all I really wanted to talk about uh, between that and you know, if you guys feel like you want to improve yourself as players as well, I, I highly recommend. Uh, not to play on fast response servers. Yeah, you get more play time and all that kind of stuff, but you learn the game better and you will become a better player uh, by playing on a more vanilla server. Uh, there's still a couple good minutes left on this map, so I think I'll talk a little bit more about Thunder Mountain and especially this last point. I don't know if you guys saw uh, the previous video. Uh, I like playing Pyro on defense on that uh, previous segment, although I do like also starting off with Crit's demo. Um, in that opening point as well. But for this final point, I love playing heavy on D. Um, you probably noticed in the beginning, I was kind of sticking out that uh, upper left area, and I was listening for the door to open, and I'll just jump down and shoot everybody who walks through the door, and I just go back up and listen for the door to open every time. Just kind of surprise heavy. And a heavy can lock down this place pretty well, as well as an engineer, but engineer requires some time to build. Uh, and over time, I've switched off from going engineer, and I've gone to playing the heavy instead. Heavy's like a mobile uh, sentry gun to me. And to be honest, um, playing on Thunder Mountain is kind of how I eventually moved towards playing heavy. I, I, when we were playing on Thunder Mountain a lot, I would play Engineer pretty much exclusively for most of the defense. And then eventually what I realized is uh, playing heavy was almost the same thing. As playing engineer, because you are like you're more mobile sentry when you are the heavy, and the same spots that were good for you to build your sentry were also good spots for you to put yourself as a heavy. Even if you have no medic, if you there, the places that are normally good for heavies would be places with a little bit of ammo, places where they can catch people by surprise, and you know sometimes there will be even health packs around the area as well making sure that guy wasn't a spy. I was very careful not to get backstabbed by uh, Shank or Not Duck, and uh, I get popped here just to save my life because uh, I was low on health. And it was good preemptive pop by NG. Not really necessary, but I uh, appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. Thanks, NG. But yeah, so I, I like playing heavy on defense for this particular part, although I, do, I did used to like going uh, Engineer. I also play Pyro on defense sometimes. Don't usually play that much demo on defense here, uh, but Pyro is good if you are if you're having problems with spies and stuff like that, and if there's already plenty of heavies. Um, but yeah, there's a couple good choke places where heavies can hold strong. Ha! Ah, freeze, butthole! <laughs> it's totally what I said to uh, Chronic there as he's jump. Uh, always good times. <laughs> The teams are wondering why they're doing so poorly this time around, and the main reason is because this map, of course, is designed to favor defense a little bit more. The earlier points are designed to favor uh, offense, uh, and this is true for most tri-stage maps. Oh, he does manage to get that reach around. That bugger. 
But yeah, so most maps are designed to favor the offense uh, in the early stages, and in the final stage, they're designed to favor defense a little bit more, just to make it really, really hard. And uh, when a map is like that, I mean, you think Dust Bowl last, right? Can you imagine fast respawns on that in that instance? That was totally sucky. Crater, crater, crater. No, I didn't crater. But yeah, it'll be terrible if uh, people respawn instantly on that last point. You wouldn't even be able to get anything going on. Uh, I mean, right now it's already bad enough with normal respawn times. But yeah. <laughs> always, always feed your medic is important. Oh, that's a spy. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think we're gonna end up holding here for the rest of the, for the remainder of the area. But there, this this choke point and the other side of that ramp, as well as a good place for heavies to hide. And I really like hiding there, just because there's health and ammo readily available. And I mean, here we have people who are working together, which you don't always have in pubs. Although on places like Ducksuit Gaming, don't get me wrong, Brotherhood of Slaughter also has uh, really good players, and uh, they get you get good teamwork as a result as well. In fact, despite all my complaints about stalemates and stuff like that on uh, the Brotherhood Slaughter with the fast respawn, I don't think I've actually seen a complete stalemate area. There was one map that is a really, really choky map and with fast respawns, it was called Castle 4. And with, with fast respawn, it was doubly worse uh, than normal. But what ended up happening, I, I think I went heavy and went like double uber push. In fact, the entire time, the only way we managed to get through was with double uber pushes, followed by maybe even one more uber like immediately and it was bloody amazing to see how everybody was like working together and getting that double uber going on but without that double uber i don't think we would have been able to push it as well and actually do that well on that map but yeah anyways guys thanks for watching i will leave it off here i will catch you guys again next week hopefully i'll be back and i'll have a fresh new episode for you right from the press thanks for watching take care have a great rest of the weekend ciao